Hi everyone, this is Alan Rosinski from Metro Manhattan Office Space. Good evening. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the most surprising customers I've had in the last 16 years. Situations which I've learned something which were unexpected. I mean, basically any time I deal with a client, there's always a curveball. There's always a surprise, just sometimes more than uh, others. Maybe about 13 years ago, I was starting out in the industry. It was January, and I got a call from Ed from Colorado. Ed from Colorado was looking for three to 4,000 square feet in a Class A office building in Lower Manhattan, and he was particularly interested in 40 Wall Street, the Toronto building. Now, what Ed did is he sold, he was a dealer of religious artifacts relating to uh, the Vatican and the Catholic Church. And he told me in our telephone consultation that he had connections within the Vatican. And sounded very intriguing, unusual, but I'm accustomed to all sorts of niche businesses. People make a living in very, very unexpected ways. So I um, figured Ed was a really solid potential client because he was flying in from Colorado I met him one day in the Trump building. We met the agents for the building, went up to a very high floor, and Ed was very excited, speaking rather quickly. And I realized that his business was something of a figment of his imagination. And he wasn't, did not come across as very credible. And during the conversation with the leasing agent, he insisted on speaking with uh, Mr. Donald Trump immediately to review terms on this particular space. So needless to say, nothing happened. I was extremely embarrassed and I did not show space in that building for several years. So what did I learn from this? Always qualify a client as much as possible. If it's a startup, you learn something about the principles. Go to their LinkedIn account. Do some research on them. Just because something sounds good, it doesn't mean anything. So that was Ed from Colorado. Now, um, a couple of years ago, I worked with a psychiatric practice, Amanda and Stacy. Amanda was a doctor. Stacy was the assistant. And I got a call one summer day from Stacy. Dr. Amanda has outgrown her union square space. She needs about 3,000 square feet. feet. She is working from 7 a.m. to 10, a, 10 p.m. And, and, and Stacy will do the legwork because Dr. Amanda doesn't have the time. Now, gave me very clear parameters, budget, geography, got to work, did my selection, and we viewed about a dozen space, spaces. And without fail, Stacy was always 40 minutes late for each appointment, which it can happen. It's a little embarrassing regarding the managing agents who meet us at the space because they're on a strict timeline and they have to be there to give us uh, access. So it was sort of a, an indication of something. I found a terrific space on West 21st Street where ownership would accept the psychiatric practice, which is a difficult to place because landlords don't want traffic and there's potential liability issues from anybody with uh, mental illness from a patient who could maybe become violent or who knows what they could do. But Dr. Amanda could not get in during the week and was very insistent that I set up access for Saturday. Now, you probably don't know, the commercial real estate, unlike the residential real estate industry, is completely closed on Saturdays. No managing agent works, no superintendent. Well, sometimes a super will be there, but it's rare. And I did something difficult. I set up access for 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning for Dr. Amanda. And I show up to meet her. What do you think happens? No show by Dr. Amanda. And I call up Stacy. And I'm kind of really offended because this is something I haven't done before to, 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 to actually make an appointment on a Saturday. And I asked her if Dr. Amanda would like to reschedule later in the day, which we set up an appointment for 2 p.m. on Saturday, four hours later. What do you think happens? Dr. Amanda does not show up. And I'm really rather annoyed, and I express myself for once, which I really, as a rule, in commercial real estate, do not ever express any kind of aggressive emotions or try not to. But I was a little bit more verbal. So we meet, we agree to meet on Monday. 
Lo and behold, Dr. Amanda shows up. Lo and behold, she loves the space, puts an offer in, and then just disappears. And then a few months ago, I got an email from Dr. Amanda asking me if I could show her space, and at which point I ignored her because I know nothing would come of it. Nothing emotional, just it wouldn't be a productive use of my time, which is at the end of the day what I'm looking for. Now, again, among other customers, which were somewhat surprising and entertaining, which I did not do a deal, was Nina, who operated or operates a spa in Chinatown. And when Nina called me, she told me she was looking for about 2,000 square feet in the vicinity of Times Square, decent budget. And she explained that she ran a gentleman's spa, but that it was 100% legitimate, no, no illegal uh, activity, it was a, a spa. Well, she actually wasn't strictly gentlemen. It was men's and women's spa. And you know, I start doing my research. And within a few days, well, a few days before tour schedule, I start getting text advertising messages for a spa with uh, attractive young women. And it was coming from Nina's phone number. And I called up Nina and I said, look, this doesn't sound legitimate. I don't sound, I don't feel very, very comfortable with this. And at that point, I refused to move forward. And there's actually in New York City, a fair amount of business from legitimate spas. It's a legitimate uh, industry. And some of them are sort of borderline. And some of them are just not providing legal services. So that was the end of that. Again, another lesson, and this was difficult because with these businesses, they get, they get tough to qualify, but always qualify your customers. Now, the other category of surprises are clients, which I've gotten deals done with. Now, I remember Bob of Seven Stars Cloud Group, NASDAQ listed company that leased more than 20,000 feet at 55 Broadway through my company. Now, Bob, from the first phone call to after the lease execution was just a gentleman, very well organized, provided very, very clear parameters, very orderly. I did my research, presented spaces. We honed them down. Was, he was very, very forthcoming in his comments and criticisms of spaces until we focused on 55 Broadway. And what was a surprise in this particular situation is how much easier it was to work with a large corporate customer who knew what they wanted than smaller businesses which don't have experience in the market. I would say a small deal for 15 to 2,000 square feet is frequently 10 times the amount of work is this particular uh, uh, transaction. And it's okay, I like the small customers and those businesses can grow and they're valuable for referral business. And in any case, I find it very interesting working with, um, with smaller uh, businesses. It gives me a sense of what's going on in the business world and in the economy and what industries are um, expanding. Now the third surprise was Dr. Alfredo, the cardiologist, who I found a space for in 2007 kind of he slipped my mind. I got a call from him in 2017 when his lease expired and I found him another space in, on West 38th Street. And I get calls like that. My clients tend to be satisfied with the service I provide and they, they remember me. And it can be a surprise, but it's a wonderful surprise to be able to work with a business a second time around. So that's the real estate industry. You have to be extremely patient. Above all, you need to have a thick skin because you're put through the ringer. But if you can take being put through the ringer, if you can take working with customers where much of the time nothing will ever happen, you can do very well because it's lucrative enough. If you do uh, a number of deals every year, you can be okay. So I um, hope this is of interest to you. If you have any questions, please tweet them to me. My Twitter handle is uh, at Metro Manhattan. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until uh, the next time, have a nice evening. Good night now.